what we try to do in a hangout service it's simple is we select a topic every week a topic or, okay. or two topics we go away whatever method we're using for studying it doesn't matter if you're using training videos if you're using training signal no, it's plural site now using plural plural, sites now yeah. Yeah. if you're using plural sites cbt nuggets uh, microsoft textbook o'reilly textbook anything you're using go study that topic for that week then we come together and discuss that topic and then we'll move on to the next topic the next week so it's kind of like giving okay. a structure to studying because one, one okay. of the things that could happen in IT again like we mentioned we've mentioned in the past is we could get overloaded with options so you want to study for MCSC, you want to study for SCCM, you talk to someone, someone, you talk to GD, for example, maybe GD will be like, no, man, plural site is the way to go. Then as I'm following plural site, um, Benji comes along and Benji's like, man, forget plural site, technet articles are the way to go. I'm like, okay, yeah, technet articles, no problem. So I jump to technet articles, then Abdul comes along and says, no, man, forget plural site and technet articles, it's this O'Reilly book. I go to get the O'Reilly book, then somebody in a blog, you know, comes up and says, man, no, that's not the way to go. The way to go is to go CBT Nugget. So you get like all this massive amount of, 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 of you being overloaded with information, so to speak. And you're not... <laughs> 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 there, you, there you go. <laughs> Don't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. You know, it's good that we have like lots of information today. But also for the beginner, it can be difficult to, to say where do i just start i just want to get start and get going where do i start from so one thing i've realized in my own personal studies if i have a structure it makes it easy so if i have a structure to follow so which is why we're like okay for example let's say 7410 we go and say let's let's go study installing and configuring servers this week so if GD is using train signal it doesn't matter just go watch every plural site just go watch all the videos on plural sites that has to do with installing and configuring servers. If Benji is using uh, O'Reilly textbook, doesn't matter. Go read all the chapters that has to do with installing and configuring servers. If Abdul is using Microsoft textbook or CBT Nugget or whatever or Technet articles, go read all the Technet articles on this one. Then let all come together. Let us share knowledge and let's learn that way. So that's like the whole point of our angle. And then we try to make things simple, not complicated. Um, so let's just get going for today. So for the past, okay. we've had three hangouts now. So I'll share my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll say. <laughs> um, and the other thing I've posted in the chat window. So this is not for every. If you know you've got fast internet connection, you may want to connect to that server. So if you look in the chat window, there's an ID and a password. So that's an ID and a password for Team Viewer. Oh. So anyone that has good internet connections, <laughs> so. <laughs> For it to work properly for you, you have to have good internet connections. Because um, we'll be doing some tasks today. So if you want to connect to my server, that's the ID and the password to connect to the server that we'll be using for today. So that's if you have fast internet connection. If not, just forget about it. We just do some demo and, and all that. And um, we've done three hangouts already. So we started with the whole concept of um, configuration manager sites. We described um, about the concept of a site in configuration manager the types of sites so who wants to wants to like let's actually just let me share my screen so we'll start from there so let's okay screen. that'll be better yeah go share so let me know once you can see my screen can you see my screen mm. so you have to click on my name below to find it for that to come up i can see it now ah, okay yeah yeah you can see it i now. can see your screen but it's because i'm on mobile ah okay, okay I let see. me try to change my orientation so yeah. and see if... ah okay I see, I see what you mean that okay it's really small yeah um okay abdul what about you can you see my screen yes i can see okay. your screen. yeah so in the past, we discussed about SCCM site and the concept of a site. So who wants to remind us of what does it mean when you say a site in SCCM? What does that mean? Abdul, because you've been with us from the beginning. 
So what's the what does it mean when we say side SCM side? What, what are we referring to? Okay, SSM site. Um, oh, let, let's do it this way. So, what are the types of sites that we have and what are their properties? Okay, we have a central administration yep. site, primary the, site. Yep, primary site. And secondary site. Yeah, nice, excellent. And do you want to pick one of them and tell us what the purpose is? Okay, uh, I can talk about central administration side. Yep. Yeah. So, so, what central administration what central side? Administration. Uh, it is a site which is, you know, uh, contains more than one primary site, two or more. Yeah. And it is uh, manage all the primary site. It has a database, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There is a database. Yeah. And it is, you know, uh, replicate to the uh, primary site or secondary. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So we have a central admin site. Basically, when in the central admin site, the moment you have more than one primary site, you need a central admin site. So central admin site is what you use to manage um, your primary sites. If you, if, the moment you have more than one primary site, you have to have a central admin site. So it's mainly for management and reporting. Um, so my, my next question to you, Abdul, will be, can we assign sites, can we assign clients to central admin site? No, we can um, uh, assign client to the CAS. Thank you very much. Good answer. No client assignment. Okay, who wants to go for the next one? Uh, primary site. Um, um, Benji or, or GD, you want, who wants to go for that? Um, I've not really looked at the um, configuration managers as yep. that the suits as part of the well I really have deep knowledge about the other suits that makes up the mix up of the private cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, really no problem. Yeah. Look. No problem. Absolutely no problem. Yeah, that's all right. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing at least this would be sort of like an introduction. Yes, uh, yes, yes. What yes. about well, Benji? You want to go for that? Primary site, what's the purpose? Because there's one thing that well, we have to understand about config manager is that for, when we talk about three types of site central admin site, primary site, secondary site, they are not inter interchangeable. They do separate things, they mean separate things. A secondary okay. site does not mean a mini primary site it does something completely different from what the primary site does a primary site does something that only it can do a secondary site does something that only it can do a cast does something that only it can do they they don't mix and interchange with one another they're different um so okay. benji you want to give that a go it's all right if you're not sure all right yeah I'm just here to learn. Yeah, no problems. It's all right. But, you know, you're really, really lucky because we just had the genius just joined us. So we have Ben online. So Ben is here to, to explain all this to us, man, because Ben, I've, I've worked with Ben before in London and <laughs> he's a good guy. Hello, Ben. Hello, don't, don't blow it too big. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's true. It's true, man. We've, I've, I've been waiting for you, man make this things clear make make this thing clear to us so we talk we're just doing a bit of revision from last time central admin side abdul explained to us so primary site what's the what does it mean david you just train me in the center now you're gonna make <laughs> leave me struggling <laughs> you'll be okay man <laughs> why don't you just recap so i'll follow up <laughs> okay no problem it's all right frank you want to give that a go are you you just want me to quickly just do the recap and then move on? Are you asking me? Yeah. So do you want to give it a go? Primary site, what's primary site? What does it mean? What does it do? 
Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, okay. Sorry. it's all right. I've yeah. been here. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, so let's just do a recap. So central admin side, what Abdul said is absolutely accurate. So it has the database. You know, you need more than one primary site in order for you to have a central admin site. And what it's mainly used for is for management and reporting. Primary site is the site where your policies come from. So this is actually the one that manages clients. And actually, which we'll talk about later, primary site is the only site out of all the sites that manages clients. Central admin site does not manage clients. All it's used for is for administration and reporting. Secondary site does not manage client because here's, here's why this one is so important because this can confuse many people and i'll show you the reason why it can confuse many people so let's bring up another whiteboard now this can confuse many people they're like okay i have my primary site here um and under this primary site i have a child site of a secondary site here or let's say i have two child site another secondary site here so let's say this is secondary site one and this secondary site two so i have little clients in this site i have clients in this site i have clients in this site also so to many people they're like yeah secondary site is more of like a mini primary site it's just like a primary site for your branch location no it's not is completely different. It's not a mini primary site. It cannot do what the primary site does. So it does something completely different from what the primary site does. And the primary site does something completely different from what the secondary site does. So an, an example is this, which we'll talk about today because that's one of our focus today, is all these clients must be assigned to a site. What do we mean by they must be assigned to a site? Because you know, in IT, you know, everyone can come and just use terms like site assignment. And everybody's confused at the end of everything. You know, like site assignment. What does that mean by site assignment? <laughs> what, what, what does it mean when we say we are assigning clients to sites in Config Manager? This is what it simply means. It means that is where your policies come from. That's, that's all it means. It means the site you are assigned to, that's where your policies come from. So what does that mean? By that's where your policies come from. As the administrator, you go on your server. You create an application. After you create the application, you deploy it to your client and, and give an instruction, install this application. The deadline is 7 p.m. on Thursday. That means by 7 p.m. on Thursday, I expect all the clients on my network to have installed this application that's a policy your client maybe every 15 minutes depending on configuration they speak to the server to the site server and say any new policy for me so they contact the server and the server says yes there's this new instruction for you to download and install this application before 7 p.m on thursday okay client gets that instruction where that instruction is coming from is from the site that it's been assigned to but you can only create such instructions on the primary site you can't create such instructions on the secondary site so what that means and this will this will make things much clearer now so what that means is that every single client under this under this secondary site they are not actually assigned to the secondary site they are actually assigned to this primary site the reason because secondary site you cannot create policies on them this primary site here it has a database this secondary site here it has a database this database here for the secondary site it contains a lot of things some of the things it contains is client information that is, these are the clients that I have on my network. It contains information like um, policies. These are the policies that I've created. These are the policies that I've deployed. It contains configuration information. This, uh, this is the way I've configured the server. But you see, this database on this secondary site is completely different. This database on this secondary site, it doesn't contain client information. It doesn't contain policies. It doesn't contain 
anything like that. The only thing it contains is configuration information. In other words, this is how I've been configured. So there's no way to create policies here because this database is not going to store that. You can only create it on the primary site and then all the sec child site under that primary site, all the secondary sites, they are actually getting their policies from the upper primary site. So let me show let me show that to you quickly because we're the model we're following here. If you're following this Microsoft um, skill pipe, this Microsoft um, Microsoft course, the module name. So let's see let's see quickly. So we're sure that what we're saying is accurate. So look at this. Um, so can you see my screen? You can see my screen, right? Yeah. Um, so let's see. So let's see. So look at this information. Um, yeah. Can we see this information? Is this bold enough? Can you see this information? You cannot assign clients to a central admin site or a secondary site. Is that clear? Can you see that? So it says a site assignment is the process of, of a client joining a primary site. You assign clients only to primary sites. You cannot assign clients to a central admin site or a secondary site. So the next question will be, so what's the point? What's the point of this secondary site? If I can't assign clients to you, so what's the point of having this, you know, this site? It's because, as we're mentioning here, all these different sites have their own purpose. If you want to manage clients, you need a primary site. So when do you need a secondary site? It's simple. It's mainly for controlling upward and downward flow of traffic. That's why that's why it's its own purpose is. It's okay. Um, let's put it this way. I've got so let's go control Z, cancel all this stuff. Okay, so I've got this site here and I've deployed an application like we said. Uh, I've created a policy here to deploy an application. The application is like 10 gig of download. Maybe you have got like some Microsoft Office or so. What you can do in this case is you can have a distribution point here on this site. And what that distribution point will allow you to do is say, when you're transferring this 10 gig file to this site, only use 20% of the bandwidth. Don't use all the bandwidth. But that will only allow you to control the downward flow of information, the distribution point. So what that means is that for this client to still get its policies, it still has to go up here to talk to this guy. And then this guy tells it, you need to download this, app, this one and then install it. But this upward flow of communication to this server, you cannot control it. The only way you can control that is if you have a secondary site. And the secondary site, you have a secondary site server, which would be a site server here. Secondary site server. Let's just call it SSS. Yeah. Secondary site server there. So what that will mean is that this secondary site server will act as a proxy. So what does that mean again by act as a proxy? This guy goes there and talks to this guy. And this guy, on behalf of this guy, talks to this guy. So what that now means is that to this guy here, you can control downward flow of information and upward flow of information. You can say, I only want you to use 20% of the bandwidth between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. After that, you can use the 100%. You cannot do that directly on this client. On the distribution point, you can control downward flow, but you cannot control upward flow. I'm not sure if that's clear at all. Is that clear? But the point I really want to... Yeah. Yeah. Carry on, Abdul, sorry. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So the point I really want to drive on um, in, in all this is that the only site that you can assign clients to is the primary site. Okay, so let's take a step forward because what we're actually discussing in this module, um, the first step that we're discussing in this module is something called site assignment. How do we assign clients to sites in Config Manager? You know, 
what are the processes that are available to us to assign clients to site and then we'll talk about that so um i hope we'll, yeah so let's go back again consider okay so how do we assign clients to site so the first thing that we need to talk about is which we've talked about in our previous hangout on config manager which we recorded is um, we have site servers which control so we have site servers which again is like where you create all your policies then we have site system roles and there are a lot of roles that we just mentioned briefly in our previous hangout roles like the management point and the reason for this rules for bringing up this rules we'll, we'll explain it um distribution point so the management point this is its own purpose so this we have a client here so think of this site server site system roles management point distribution points think of them as different um services although they can exist on the same server but let's say they are separate server let's say this is the site server so this is the primary site server and then this is the management point on the primary site server so let, let's say they are two separate servers but again they can all be on the same server let's say this is the management point this client here does not directly communicate with this site server never all the communication between the client and the site server goes through this management point so as far as the client is concerned if i say i want you to scan yourself client and i want you to tell me all the softwares that is installed on you i need that inventory i want to be able to know what software is installed on this client i create that instruction on the site server which is a policy so software inventory policy or asset intelligent policy scan yourself give me a report the site server so every 15 minutes by default this client checks in with the management point and say any new policy for me yeah so this site server when i configure that policy it creates that policy and passes that to the management point so whenever this guy checks and says any new policy for me the guy goes yeah there's a new policy for you to scan yourself and report back so this guy does all the scanning and then reports back to the management point Management point takes that information and then passes it to the site server, which takes all that information, processes it, and then stores that information into the database where you as an administrator can use your um, SCCM console to connect to this database. And then you can see, oh, this client right here has Microsoft Office installed. This client right here has 7-zip installed. So that's the way the whole process works. So the client checks in with the management point, downloads any new policy, executes the policy, reports back to the management point, passes that information to the site server, site server processes it, and then stores it in the database in the back end. And you as an administrator can now view that information from your console, which connects directly to the, to the database. Okay, so here's why that's important. So the other question that will come to your mind is if the client is communicating, if all the client communication is going to the management point, why do I still now need, which is a legitimate question, why, because this is a primary site server here, right? Why do I now need a secondary site server here? Why can't I just take a management point, yeah, and put a management point in this location, and that will solve my problem, right? Because now the client will be talking to this guy. This guy will now be talking to this site server here. But again, can you see the problem that you'll be having here? Is you cannot control the upward flow or downward flow of information here. Whereas if you have it the other way around, this guy talks to the management point on the secondary site. This one reports to this site server here. This site server here can cache the information and then decide, oh, I'm only gonna use 20% of the bandwidth to send this information to my main server. This flow of traffic here, you can control. If you just put the management point, you can control the flow of traffic there. So I'm not sure, so that's like the, the whole point of that. So let, let's, try, let's try to take this one a bit slowly now, because we're talking about site assignment. So 
for configuration manager we need to install a piece of software a little piece of software on this machine let's just call it c the client the, a piece of configuration management client we need to install them on this client and when we install them we need to tell them this is the site that you are assigned to in other words again this is where your policy will come from so there are two ways that we can do that we can do that manually or we can do that automatically of course everyone likes automatically but there's a lot of work involved <laughs> involved before you can get it working automatically same thing as with anything that is automated there's a lot of work before it actually gets to working okay so manually what does it mean by manual site assignment you install this client here on this machine after I install this client so let's let's bring up our server i'm not sure if anyone is actually connected to the server that i gave yet so i gave some team viewer information in case anyone wants to connect to the server that i'll be using for today so if you look in the chat window you see some team viewer information in case you want to connect by team viewer to the server so um let's go back i think there's a client here control panel um let's go for under my devices let's see which one of them lb client one okay let's bring lb client one up let's start it okay so what i want to show you is one of the first ways that you can do manual um site assignment is you can install the client and after installing the client you can actually go into that client and say this is the site that you are assigned to so that's one way to do it yeah you install the client after installing the client so after that system comes up we'll show how to do that you can go into the client and say this is your site so from then on that site is where your policies come from but don't make this mistake of because that's where the thing that we talked about earlier that's where it's so important because again if all these ones that you have here if you have a secondary site here another secondary site here let's say for any reason you have two primary sites let's say this is another primary site and then you decide to have because once you have another primary site you have two primary sites you need a central admin site and these two primary sites are connected to your central admin site every site has a three character code so let's say this is our headquarters site so let's call this hq1 let's call this uk1 site so you have to give it a site code let's call this um beijing one yeah let's call this um india one and let's call this um japan one so you give all the site a site code now after installing this client it will tell you give me the three digit site code that you want me to be assigned to if you go and put in your secondary site that's that will, you, you get the point why because you cannot assign clients to secondary site if you go and put in hq1 it won't work so it makes things easy so if you have a primary site it makes things easy for you all your primary site all your client whether they're in secondary site or not they will be assigned to this primary site so you always put bj1 in that field to say this is your site so i think the system should be up now so we can see what that looks like um okay here we go um ah okay i can see someone's connected already so who's connected ah frank nice so actually we'll just get frank to help us with this because frank is probably already used to this so can you move the mouse frank okay let me see if you can let me see yeah nice one good one so actually if you just click on the desktop if you just try to go to the control panel so you can right click the start bar and then go to control panel then and then bring up the client the configuration manager client so that'll be yep there you go so if you click on that so this is one way that you can do manual site assignment so there's more than one way for you to do manual yeah so yeah so if you click on that 
you it should come up with the client yeah there we go so you can go on the site there right at the top there is a site and then there you go you can put in your site there and press ok yeah so that's one way so you assuming this one is not here well, i can install this client manually and after installing the client put in the site information there click apply and then this client is assigned to that site so that's one way to do that another way to do that is during the installation so that one is after your installation is that during the installation you can actually assign a client to the site and the way to do that is let's take away all the messy bits from this one again yep there we go okay another way yeah, is you can do it manually from the is when you're installing your configuration manager client which we'll talk which we'll get to in another module on the different method of installation you can run and ccm setup.exe to install it which is the the installation file and then you can specify the site as you're installing it so if i say ccm setup.exe sms site code um equals to uk1 that will install this client on that machine and assign it to the site uk1 but that is again manual way to do this so actually microsoft has a a good list of all the switches uh, with so if i do ccm setup switches and you can see yeah there we go about client installation properties so you can see a long list of properties or switches that you can specify as you're installing uh, the client so as you're running ccm setup.exe you can specify this source but the one we're interested in is the site code um actually i'll just do site code Yeah, there we go. SMS site code. So it specifies the configuration manager site to assign the configuration manager client to it. Again, remember, site assignment simply means that's where you're getting your policies from. So it has to be a primary site. Cannot be a cast, cannot be a secondary site. So this can either be a three character site code or the word auto. If auto is specified or if this property is not specified, the client attempts to determine its configuration manager site assignment from Active Directory, which we'll talk about next. Um, so here is what you just do system setup dot SMS site code equals there and that runs it from there. So let's say you're deploying the client by group policy, for example, to your client and you want them to be assigned to your site, you know, during the installation process, just give it this command, CCM setup, you know, SMS site code equals whatever, and that will get the job done. So what you're saying is if you use auto, what you're telling the installation is hey install it and after installing let the client determine by itself which site is assigned to which is the next one we're going to automatic site site assignment now this one there's a lot of work involved in getting this one working first of all you can only use automatic site assignments for machines that are joined to the domain that's the very first thing you should know is you can only use this for machines only for machines joined to the domain you can't use it for if a machine is in a work group you can't use it for it and you see the reason why the reason why is because how the client will determine which site um, to assign itself to automatically is based on information that it gets in active directory so that's why you can only use this for machines joined to the domain so let's go slowly about that what does that mean that this how this client so this client here i use automatic site assignment for it it will try to determine which site am i supposed to join based on information but where to get that information from is what's in active directory so that that leads us to how does that information get there so I think I've been talking a lot. I think let's do a bit of question in here. So, so, so um, does anyone want to talk us? How does the information get to Active Directory?
So if we're using automatic site assignments, the client has to determine based on information in Active Directory that this is my site. But how does that information get to Active Directory? Abdu? Again, a question, please. Um, so, um, automatic site assignment. Want to detect? So, uh, we said it can only be used for machines joined to the domain, and that's because if a machine wants to determine its site automatically, the way it does that is using information that it gets from Active Directory. So, how does that information get into Active Directory to begin with? Um, I think because the um, site server, uh, I mean, uh, has the delegation to write information on Active Directory. Excellent. So we go, yeah, we're on the right path here. So it's, um, Abdul has brought a very good point. So we're talking about how we're going to get automatic site assignments to work. So here are some of the things that we need that Abdul just mentioned. So let's go. The site server must have the right to write the information to Active Directory. But where will that right be? Will that right be to your whole domain? Where exactly will that right be? Is it a right that, because for example, you know, you don't just give a machine ability to write to your whole domain. It can, you know, it can, it can write anything it wants in your domain. Ben, I can see you on me. Will there be some group policies, yeah? Um, you're close, but it's not a good policy. So you're, you're close. You're on the, you're, you're on the right track. You're thinking in the right direction. So let, let's, let's go quickly to, to the server again. So let's minimize this LB client and let's go back to our, to our, actually, let's bring up Active Directory this time around. Let's bring up Active Directory. So you're right. So actually, if I go to SCCM, um, let's go P. So going back to SCCM, because this one will lead us to, to many, many, areas if i go to sccm i'll just show you quickly but we'll talk about so don't mind whether you understand this or not yet we'll talk about that so if i go to sccm and i go under boundary groups what i can say is ah okay i've got to boundary groups here i can go under properties and what i can say is i can say to this boundary group use this boundary group for site assignment this is where you configure automatic site assignment and i can say you're assigned to this site so any any client in this boundary is assigned to this site so I do that configuration on Config Manager. Goes into the Configuration Manager database. Configuration Manager takes that information and publishes that information to Active Directory, like what Abdul said. It puts that information to Active Directory so that any client that belongs to this site, whenever they look in Active Directory and say, hey, I've been told to automatically assign my service site. Tell me which boundary am I? you know, which site am I assigned to, can get that information from Active Directory. But this information is published somewhere in Active Directory. So can somebody show, show, show us like where that information, where will I find the information that SCCM is publishing to Active Directory? Where will I find that information here? Anyone wants to take the mouse? I mean, I can see only one person connected. But anyone wants to guide, if we guide Frank to where that information is. So, Abdul, you want to speak, or, or Ben? Or, be, or Benji? Yeah, carry on, carry on. I can see Frank is already moving there. So, those, those are my managed service accounts which we'll talk about after, my group managed service account. So, Abdul, you want to guide Frank? Where should um, Frank look? I think it is uh, write those or publish those information on um, uh, system uh, management, sorry, uh, system container. 
Excellent. System management. Excellent. That again. Let's go back again. So we're making progress. So back. So just one one minute. So let's go back. The site server must have the ability to provide the information to Active Directory. So actually, I'll copy all this and let's go to a new white a new whiteboard so that we don't make things clumsy. So for automatic site assignment to work, these are the things that needs to be done so that we know that even though it's automatic. <laughs> there's still a lot of works that need to be done before that you can have that benefit of automatic so um let's just put automatic site assignment so yeah let's change that to site so so the site server must have the right to write that information to ad so we do that configuration in config manager it publishes that information to ad and abdul has said rightly the information is published in the system management container in ad so in other words the only container or the only the only place that the site server must have this right to write information is to this container you don't need to give it information to all your active directory just give it the ability to write information to this container in active directory so back to our computer now. So Abdul, will you gu guide Frank again? So where where can find uh, Frank find the system management container? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able uh, to see the full screen. Ah, okay. If you just scroll up the the mouse. Yeah. Oh, um, hold on. If it, if it's not clear, I can I can probably come in to help. So let me let me come in to help. The first thing you need to do, Frank, is you need to go to under view at the top because because right here you can't see any well not that you can't see any containers but, but but if you click view yeah and then click advanced features first and that will show you more more information that you can see before. So now you can see the system container there. So if you expand that, if you expand that, um, if you, you can click the arrow to expand it. That arrow, yeah. And then you can see the system management container there. So the question, the next question will be, how, how did this system management container get here? Abdul, do you want to answer that? Or Ben, do you want to answer that? How did this system management container get there? Abdul, um, yeah, come on. How did it get there? Yeah, actually, we created this uh, container. This is one of the prerequisites for uh, SSM. Excellent. So it's not actually a prerequisite for SSM. You can have SSM without doing this at all. But if you want to take advantage of some of the integration with Active Directory, you have to have this. You don't have to have this in order to have SSCM. It's not needed at all. You can have SSCM, everything work fine. But again, if you want your config manager to be able to publish information that you've configured to Active Directory to help your client locate resources easily, then, like what Abdul said, this is a prerequisite. So what has happened is, before even installing Config Manager, I've gone here, created a new container under System called System Management, and then went under Properties, and then under Security, and added my SCCM site servers, added them to a group, and gave that group full control of this container so that my SCCM site server can write information to this container. So when I now install my SCCM server, the very first SCCM that I install in my environment, it automatically looks for this container, looks to check if it can publish information to it, and then begins to publish information to it. But before we actually do this, there's something else we need to do, which is we need to extend our Active Directory schema. So that even comes before the system management container is created. So again, so you've seen that this list is growing, right? <laughs> so you see, it doesn't look as simple automatic <laughs> as before. So first of all, we need to extend our AD schema. 
And what does that mean? It's really simple. It simply means we need to add new properties to Active Directory database. So again, what does that mean? Because that's where, you know, IT people, sometimes we can throw out a bunch of times, extend the schema, you know, perform the configuration, execute the CL. And at the end, Benji is like, I'm more confused. You know, you, you, you've just confused me. Like, so Benji's like, so David explained to me, you know, like in terms of Active Directory, and I go, you know, after after you do the Winstock services, you get the schema to be extended, and then the attributes we talk to the classes and the object, and Benji's like, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? So sometimes you just throw out these terms like extend schema and stuff like that without really explaining to people what that actually means. So when we say extend the schema, it's just simple. You're adding new um, properties or new classes to the Active Directory database. And this is what that means. If I go under here, if I go under um, at CRT, and if I connect to the schema here. So don't, if you want to know more about all this, we have some recordings on Active Directory. Uh, we did some hangout like some time ago on Active Directory. Well, we did a little bit of Active Directory deep dive, but not that much. So if I go to the, under the schema and I can go under here. So because the schema here is what, because you have a user object in Active Directory, right? The thing that defines what that user object is, is this schema. So the thing that defines, you can have an object called user, that user can have these properties, comes from this schema. So basically when we extend the schema, um, using config in um, the configuration manager schema extension here we just all we just done is we've added new objects um they're called mss here mssms something they're somewhere 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 here mssms um okay Okay, here we go. So now we can see this just when we do the schema extension, what that means is that it will automatically add all these classes and attributes to Active Directory. So this is what defines that you can have an object called SMS site assignment. You can have an object called SMS management point. So that comes from here. So that's that that's what you need to do first. So again, you extend the schema creates a system management folder on um, container give your site server permission to write to that container and all its subfolders yeah so after doing that um then when you install config manager for example you can see this information here so this is the sms site information if i right click on it and i click properties so this was published automatically by config manager if i go under the attributes I know we're going a bit deep dive here. If I go under the attribute and I scroll up, you can see here, SMS roaming boundaries. And what this is saying is that if you're assigned to any of these sites, your site code is UK1. So that's the information. That That's all it's done. It's published this information in Active Directory to say, if you're in any of these sites, this site or this site, here's your site code your site code will be UK1. So you can automatically assign yourself because when the client comes online, the client looks and says, what's my IP address? My IP address is 10.172.5.5. Looks in Active Directory and said, Active Directory, what site do I belong to? Active Directory says, yeah, you belong to the London site. Then it's like config. So Active Directory, that London site, where, where am I supposed to be able to write to? Oh, sorry, where's my um, where, where's, where's my site code? And then this site code is delivered to it. So is that clear at all? So is there any question about that? Feel free. Ask any question you want to ask about that, please. Or is it clear? Is it perfectly clear or you have questions in your mind? If you have questions, you don't understand something, just who knows? Maybe you ask an information and we'll do an hangout on it. Abdu, is that clear or you have a question? Yeah, it's clear, but I have a question now. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, if the the machine is, you know, uh, in a working group. Yeah. Yeah. How it will be assigned? Manually. It has I, been manual. It has been manually. Yeah. 
So manually, again, remember that we're talking about site assignment, not about installing uh, the client. So whatever we use to install the client, whether you're using group policy, you're, you know, you're using group policy, well, you can use group policy if it's in a work group. Whether you're using uh, a script, whatever you're doing, what you have to do is during, whenever you're installing the client to, whenever you're installing the SSM client, to that machine, you have to use this switch SMS site code equals the site code. That's the way you give it a site assignment. So it has to be manual. So there are two ways to assign to site manually or automatically. Because this automatic depends on Active Directory. So if it's not in, if it's not joined to the domain, it's not going to be able to get that information from the domain. So you have to use the other method, which is manually. So in other words, when you're installing the client on that work group computer, specify using SMS site code and say, this is your primary site code. Or after you've installed it, go under the configuration manager client in control panel and specify this is your site code. So that's the only way to do it. Does that answer your question? Abdul? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So is this clear at all? <laughs> yep. Or any other yes. questions regarding that? Any question about Active Directory Schema and all that? Okay. So if, if we just quickly just move a little bit step forward. So again, remember that all these things that we've talked about in terms of automatic site assignment and all that, it looks like uh, it's going to be straightforward in the beginning. Now, look at how we have to do. We have to extend our AT, site, uh, our AT, scheme, um, our AD schema. We have to create this container. Not only create this container, we have to give our site server right to write to this container and its subfolders. And then after that, we install our, our config manager. And can then... Ah, oh, you can't see my screen again. You should I can. Ah, you can, okay. Yeah. So then if I no, go... No, it's not up. I don't see it. You don't see my screen? No, I see a guy sleeping. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so if, I, if we go back here, let's go back to config manager. Then actually, I think, Frank, you will help me out with this. Uh, so let's see how exactly do we um, configure that because this will lead us to the, our next topic which we just introduced for today and then continue next week so this will lead us right into it so if i go back to the sccm server so here is where you're going to configure and say that, that configuration from config manager so if you go on the hierarchy configuration frank if you expand yeah, hierarchy configuration, then if you click on boundary groups, so this, this is why this will lead us to our next topic. If you right click one of those boundary groups and then go to its properties, then under references, here's where you can specify. Okay, this is this boundary group. You can say, use this boundary group for site assignment. Then when the moment you configure this and click OK, you know what will happen is the site server will take that information, publish it into Active Directory. Yeah. Actually, let's see if we can do. Okay, I cannot change. Um, I can't change uh, this one. But let's let's do a test. Let's do a quick test. This will be interesting. So let's do a quick test. Let's go here. Let's go to Active Directory Site and Services and actually just create a a dummy site. So Active Directory Site and Services. Um, actually, I think I may even have some. Yeah, actually I do. Actually, I have some new sites because I was playing with Windows Azure recently. So I have this site called Azure West Europe. Okay. So let's go to Config Manager and let me let me have a look and see my boundaries because my server has been off for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. We've got Azure West Europe. So I want to create this and add it to a new boundary group. And let's call this Azure West Euro PG boundary group. Yeah. And then say, use this boundary group for site assignment and say site UK one. 
So let, before we do this, let's go back to Active Directory again. Now look at this, this information that we had earlier. If I right click on this information that's published in AD and go under properties, if I go under attribute editor and I go under the roaming boundary site, there are only two sites you can see here, Birmingham site and London site. Okay, right? There's no other site here, right? Only Birmingham and London site. I can cancel out of this. And then let's go to config manager again. And in config manager, we'll specify this Azure West Europe site. We'll say this site, you actually also belong to, um, you actually also belong to site UK one. And then I'll just leave the click apply. And okay, so I go on the boundary groups. Yeah, we have Azure West Hero BG properties and references. Use this boundary group for site assignment. And you have this information here. And I go okay. Okay. Um, and very soon, very shortly, you should see that information here in Active Directory because the site server in the background will talk to Active Directory to this folder and say hey site UK1 you just got a new site that is assigned to you so and it will publish that information here and so whenever anything from that network comes up and says can you see here can we see now we have Azure West Evo here now and that's what happens in the background. So whenever any machine comes up on that network, it looks and says, which Active Directory site am I a member of? Since this is my Active Directory site, from there, it can use this information to find out which sites do I assign myself. And the SMS site assignment is right here. UK1, that's your site. And that's all that happens in the background. And then the client knows, okay, that's my site. That's where I get my policies from. You know, that's what gives me instruction, so to speak. And the type of instruction you'll be given is enable the component to do software inventory. You will pass that instruction to the client. The client will enable that component. Say, do software inventory once every seven days. No problems. That information will go down right from the site server to the management point. If it's on the secondary site, right down to the secondary site right down to the client. So that's what happens. So as we've talked about that, let's move a step forward. So when we were doing this, we saw that the place that we configure automatic site assignment is on this object in config manager called the boundary group. So that's the next one that I want to talk about because it's really important. So Ben, what boundary group? Why, what does it mean by when you say boundary group? Or what do you think boundary group? Um, what do you think boundary group means when we talk about boundaries or boundary group or what does boundary mean in config manager any, any idea ah your mic is mu muted your mic is muted you may need to unmute yourself yeah yeah is it okay now yeah it's okay now we can hear you clearly i think it's like setting scope so each client assigned to any group yeah we right. have a policy within that you're right in terms of like setting scope um but there's a particular term that we look i'm looking for so you're right in terms of like, like a setting scope but what does that scope what is it talking about so when you say boundary in config manager taiwo taiwo is around we've got taiwo online taiwo is like a, a <laughs> hello taiwo so bound what does boundary mean in config manager what's a boundary because oh, again, when you're when we're learning all these things, don't be concerned if you can't put everything together yet. Yeah, don't be concerned if the if it's confused that you have Active Directory site, you have a site in Config Manager, <laughs> you have this thing coming up called Boundary and Boundary Group, and everything is flying everywhere. Don't be concerned. You know, it's little by little. So you're getting this information now. What will happen is that maybe down the road, you come across this, and you'll be watching a train signal video somewhere or sorry, a plural side video or CBT nugget video or reading a textbook somewhere and all of a sudden it will click. All of a sudden you're like, yes, this is exactly what it means. I understand now. 
So if you can put it all together, don't worry. That's that's the way learning is. If you're learning anything, at the beginning you're not able to put everything together. But later at some point you come across it and you'll be able to put it together. So Taiwo, what is boundaries in config manager? Hello, your mic is muted, Taiwo. You need to unmute yourself. If not, we'll go to Abdul okay. again. Abdul saves us all the time. Yeah, can I hear you, Taiwo? Okay. Well, if I can remember, boundary group is is the it's um it's how clients can yeah. it's how they retrieve how they communicate how how they can get information from let's say from the management point and distribution point. Um, for instance, maybe you're trying to deploy applications or Windows update to a client. Yeah. Um. You need that boundary group, so to, it's like a selected few. Mm -hmm. Those are the people you are going to download those softwares to. So, client needs. I mean, SSCM needs the boundary group so they can deploy softwares or Windows Update to a certain selected few clients. I don't know if. Yeah, you're, so, you're again. You're close. You're on the right. I think you're on the right direction also. But there's a particular word that we're looking for in terms of boundaries. Okay, what about boundaries? So that's boundary groups. What about boundaries? What are boundaries? When we say, okay, for example, look at I go on the boundaries here. See London side, Azure West Hill, Birmingham side. Where does this information come from? You know, who puts them there? Where does all this information, like London side, Azure West Hill side, Birmingham side, what does it, what does it mean? What does it come from? Is that not coming from the Active Directory site and services? Absolutely. It's coming from Active Directory site and services. How did it get here from Active Directory site and services? So we're going uh, back little by little and then we'll get there. We'll get it. So how does it, how does it, how does it get from Active Directory site and services to config manager? Uh, I know we um. Um, is it, uh, the SCCM server already has rights to Active Directory, so I think that's where it's pulling the information from. Yeah, but where do I configure that to pull that information? In administrative tool in SCCM. Yeah, hey, thank you very much. That's enough. That's enough. The administrative tool. So you just go on that discovery method, on the Active Directory Forest Discovery, right? I can go Properties and enable this. And when I enable this, I can say, automatically create Active Directory site boundaries when they are discovered. So that's where that information comes from. So going back, but again, let's keep going back till we get our the answer to our actual question. So in Active Directory, what does Active Directory sites represent? So let's keep going back little by little. So we said, hey, I go under Config Manager, I go under Boundaries. I see all these sites here. Where does this site come from? They come from Active Directory. How did they get here from Active Directory? I configured them. I enabled it and said, go and discover the sites in Active Directory and pull them into Config Manager. But in Active Directory, where this site is coming from, what do they represent in Active Directory? Locations and subnets. That's your answer. Boundaries equals subnet equals network. That's all. So to make it simple, it's not it's not like a complicated big thing. Whenever you hear boundaries, it's talking about subnet networks. That's all. So it could be a soft a bound a network or subnet that you're pulling in directly from Active Directory. It could be a subnet or network that you're defining by yourself. So for example, if I go here and I right click on this and I say create a boundary. I can say, okay, I just want an IP subnet. I don't even want to go and be pulling that information from Active Directory. I want an IP subnet. I want an IPv6 prefix. I want an IP address range. I just specify. So what that means is, here's is, here is the important part. So let's go back to our diagram again, because this is this will really, really help us. So let's go back to our diagram again. Where is MS Paint uh, whiteboard? This one. So what that means is, let's say 
there are two networks here. Let's say on this site, we have network 10.1.1.0/24 and 10.1.2.0/24. Let's say we have those two here. What I can do is I can say, let's say this client here, I'm not sure how to move this one. Let's say this client here belongs to this network, this subnet subnet. This client here belongs to this subnet. Yeah, let's say that's the way it is. So what this allow me to do is bring my physical network into Config Manager so that I can do things like this. I can say this client belongs to this boundary group. 10.1.1.0 and this other client belongs to this boundary group. So when we say boundary group, it just means you belong to this network. But Config Manager doesn't have that intelligence to detect all this. We have to be the intelligence behind Config Manager that tells it what our physical network looks like. So here is why this one is important. Because I can put a management point like what Taiwo said, I can put a management point, which is where, remember, all client communication goes through where? The management point. So I can put a management point in this network and tell this client, because you are in this network, this is your management point. And I can put a distribution point, which is where the client will be downloading software and all that from. And I can tell that client, because you're in this network or boundary, this is your distribution point that you'll be using. So it just allows me to bring my physical network structure into Config Manager. That's what it allows me to do. And if I want, I can put another management point and distribution point on this network of this other client and then configure it using boundary group to say all oh, the clients in this boundary group, this is your management point, this is your distribution point. Is that clear or is there any question regarding that? Abdul, carry on. Okay. Uh, that's mean if uh, this network is not uh, added to the active directory side, side and services subnet. Your voice is really uh, breaking. Your, uh, your voice is really breaking. Sorry? Your voice is really breaking. Can you hear me now? Uh, is, um, still breaking. Do you want to, yeah, if you try it, try again. Okay. Uh, my question is, if this network is not added to the active directory site and service <laughs> Frank is smiling because your voice is still breaking. Did, did you move from a place okay. where the signal was good to another place? Okay, uh, we can, I can postpone this question later on, okay? Just ah. continue. Okay. Ah, okay. Or you can type it if you can type. Yeah. Or you can type it if possible so I can grab it. I'm on mobile, that's why. Ah, okay. Okay. So what? Okay. Anyone has any question regarding that again? So a, before, in previous version of SCCM, actually, in S, if you just have SCCM 2012, I think just Service Pack One, you cannot use Boundary Group to assign management point. You can only use it to assign distribution point and um, something called state migration point, which we'll get to later. But from 2012 out to Service Pack One, which is the latest version, you can use this boundary group to assign management point. For example, if I go back on mine, because I don't have the latest version on my um, on my lab environment or in my lab environment, I cannot use this boundary group to assign management point. So if I go to properties, so what I can say is I can use it to assign the site. I can use it to assign a distribution point. So I can go add and I can look for a distribution point and add it. And basically what I'm saying is Everyone on this subnet, yeah, everyone on this subnet, if you want to download any software, this is the one, this is the distribution point I want you to use. Or from 2012 out to Service Pack 1, I can put a management point here and say, hey, you want to communicate with the server to say, get me my policies, you know, here's the report, I want to report back to you. You can put it here also. 
So that's what boundaries and boundary groups are. So again, in boundaries, there are four types of boundaries that we can have, which are really straightforward. You can have the one from Active Directory, which basically means you pull in your because Active Direct again, Active Directory is kind of like similar. You have all these objects, computers, users, everything flying around. But there's no way to have like that intelligence of what is my network like? Do I start replicating between this server in Germany and this server in Japan when they've only got a hundred K link between them? You know? So for you to bring that intelligence in, or does a client try to log in in Japan and instead of using the Active Directory server um, domain controller that is next to him, he's using the Active Directory domain controller that's in Germany, you know, which is much more slower. So the way you bring that intelligence into Active Directory is you create subnets and then you put all those subnets into a group and then call them sites. And then under that site, you can have servers. So which we tell the client, if you're in Japan, these are your domain controllers that are close to you. If you're in Germany, these are your domain controllers that are close to you, which is what you find out if you go on the Active Directory, if you go on the Active Directory sites and services, uh, what you find out is you can have this one. So this is a site here. I can click servers and it's telling me if you're on this network, this the DC that's close to you. Or if you're on this network, this the, there's no DC close to you. If you're on this network, this is the DC that's close to you. So you bring that information from Active Directory, bring it into Config Manager, and then basically you basically just think of boundary groups as a an Active Directory site, but instead of adding domain controllers here, what you're adding is management point and distribution point and state migration point. To say if you're on this network, use this state migration point, use this management point, use this distribution point. Is that clear? So let's let, I think we'll probably pause for there today. I think because where we've got to now is we've talked about site assignment. We've introduced the concept of boundaries. And then from next week, we'll go some step further from boundaries. So what we'll do from next week is we'll go, uh, if I bring up this one, is we'll go more than boundaries and we'll talk about resource dis discovery, user and device collection and role-based administration. So at least we've beaten the horse to death. So if anyone were to ask you and say, um, Frank, uh, I want you to assign this 200 clients to uh, my central administration site, what would your response be? Can't do it. <laughs> Excellent. I <laughs> can't do it. What about they say, well, boy, I'm, I'm in this primary site. That's where I'm assigned to. I'm assigned to this primary site. What would your response be? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, the only thing, the only site that you can assign clients to is what? Primary site. That's the only one. So, and your secondary sites and others have their own purposes that they do. And if I were to ask Abdul and say, Abdul, if I want to assign my clients to sites, what options do I have? I have a machine that's in a work group. How can I assign it to a site? What will your answer be? You can assign it manually. Manually. What if I say no? I don't want to be doing anything manual. I want everything automatic. We're not in the 19th century. We're in a different century now. <laughs> what would you say? I've assigned uh, going to the domain. Yeah, exactly. Join your machine to the domain. And then we can use Active Directory you know, to give it the information for automatic site assignment. And this one yeah. is a bit of a tricky question because we've not yet talked about this, but we'll talk about it later. Because when you're installing clients, which is in, an, in the next module, I think, when you're installing clients, you can install client automatically from your config manager console. In other words, you can right click the client and say, install client and it will install client. When we do that, are we using manual site assignments to assign the clients to site or automatic? What do you think? So give your answers. When we do automatic client push in Config Manager, so let's go, let's go so we can see what I mean. So if I go to Config Manager and I say um, cancel, cancel, if I go here, um, 
my device is okay so let's, let's say this domain controller here i right click it and i go i want to install client to it i want to install the client so i can go install client we'll get to this one in details later and say i want to install this client so i can say install the client software from a specific site but i don't want to select that option you know i don't want to say install from this specific site allowed to be installed from domain controller because it's the domain controller so if i use this method and i click next next and finish it will go and push the config manager client to that machine and then assign it to a site but this method is you using automatic site assignment or manual site assignment so let's go from left to right abdul what's your answer oh, this is a manual site assignment manual okay Abdul says manual. Benji, what's your answer? <laughs> you have to unmute yourself, yep. So I'm sorry? Doing? So we're doing automatic client push. Are we using mm -hmm. manual site assignment or automatic site, site assignment? So we're just pushing it out. From this way so it's a manual side assignment automatic side assignment what method are we using because remember we are automatically installing this on this machine i'd say automatic automatic okay yep what about frank what's your answer it's automatic as well ah, frank says automatic what about taiwo what's your answer it's it's semi-automatic it's manual because it's not fully automatic because there's another way it installs automatically. This is manual. I'll say it's manual. Manual. I mean the site assignment, not just the installation, the site assignment. So assigning it to a site. So Taiwo says manual. Okay, yeah. I think in, in, with this one, I will agree with Abdul and Taiwo. So Abdul and Taiwo are right. So if you install a client this way, you're not assigning it automatically. Because what you are actually doing is you're using manual site assignment. Um, you can do, you can use it this way for automatic, but most people won't. So Abdul, do you want to explain why you said manual? What's your reason for saying manual, or how do you prove this manual, manual site assignment? Okay, for the site assignment, it is. Um... Because you push the client to that machine, if you want, if you if you push the, the client um, uh, uh, manually, yeah, I think you push uh, the the client manually, so the site assignment will be kind of manually. What about if I say enable automatic client push? Would that still be manual or automatic? It should be automatic. It will be automatic. So here's the thing to get. So it always it, it depends. So actually, that's the answer. The answer is it depends. Because if I do client push, whether manually or automatic, on the site here, this is what is happening. Whether manually or automatically, what I'm doing is I'm running ccm setup.exe on that machine using this installation properties. So can you see that this is manual? Because I'm using the same thing you use if you're using manual, because I'm specifying a SMS site code. Except I go SMS site code auto here. That's when it's automatic site assignment. But here I'm saying a manual site assignment saying whenever I do client push automatically or manually, so you say client push installation properties, this is the site I want you to assign that client the site. So that's manual site assignment. So if I use auto, what will happen in the case? If I use auto, what will be the process? If I use auto, what will happen? And let us end here for today. So if I say SMS site code auto and then right click it and go install this client on the machine. Can you explain what will happen when the process starts? So, so we'll look for the boundary information Excellent. Uh, directory. Excellent. It will look for, you say, what's my IP address? Okay, here's my IP address. What site do I belong to in Active Directory? As my site. So when it when it knows the site in Active Directory, what does it do next? What's the next thing it does? It assigns assign the site code there. Yeah. So it looks for that information in System Management Container and says, "Hey, here's my boundary. Which site am I assigned to?" And it assigns itself to that site. 
So that is automatic site assignment. But if I go, even if I'm doing automatic client push, if I go and say UK1 here, that's manual site assignment. I'm manually telling it, this is your site. Abdul, is that clear? Yes. Yep. So now you can ask a question now. Your voice is clever now. Yeah, actually, uh, during your explanation, I've, I found the answer for my question. <laughs> okay. No problem. Okay. Right. So any so questions for what we've discussed this week? So we'll carry on next week again. We're going slowly, but the good thing is that we're understanding it. We, I mean, we're understanding little by little, even if it's just a little bit of understanding that we get, we're understanding little by little what's actually going on behind the scenes in Config Manager, how the operation is actually working. And little by little, we'll go a little bit deeper next time, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. So any questions regarding what we've talked about this week? Anything relating to your own environment? So the book I'm using uh, is the official Microsoft um, course. Because I went for the I, I went for the official Microsoft course for these three courses, and again, like I warned last week, Abdul was here last week when I warned about this. Is that if you want to do it, do this one one zero seven four seven, do one zero seven four eight. That talks more about planning and architecture. This one talks more about administration. Don't do this one, <laughs> because this one is a mini version of this one. This one is this one minus many materials. So <laughs> so don't be don't be carried away with the in tune title. You only do actually you do less in tune here than you do here. 